<sighs> this... Whose idea was it? To track weight for gold this campaign? Not me, man. I don't know. <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Quest Giver. Oh, hello. Got that quest done. Think we can get a reward? Sure. Drop the money! Oh. You're an adventurer. You have way too much gold. Here's some stuff you can spend it on. And you should. First off, of course, equipment. If you're an adventurer, you're going to be running around hacking and slashing lots of baddies and things like that. You're going to need swords, armor, uh, all kinds of stuff like upgrading your swords and armor. Um, just general shopping sprees like baths. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, no baths. Come on. Good old porcelain. <laughs> that's just a waste. Uh, <laughs> Okay, but actually, as far as equipment goes, one thing that people don't think about very often is pets. You can literally buy a tiger, Tiger King. Mary had a little lamb. Go nuts. Or you could buy any other pet. You don't have to be a Tiger King. You can be the Mastiff King. I know they're pretty cheap. So whatever pets you can think of can end up being really helpful. So when your shopping spree is over and you still need a couple of things, you might want to look for services. You might actually need somebody to make equipment for you or maybe an enchanter to magicify all your stuff. There's alchemists in the world that could make and create different kinds of potions for you and they don't have to be limited to what's in the books because there's not very many. There could be so much more and it's only limited by your imagination. Maybe the Enchanter and Alchemist have the same shop and uh, they get up to some crazy stuff. <laughs> Business-wise. Don't make it weird. Or it, even if you're going to be like super rich, living in a city, have your home base, you might need a butler, a gardener, some sort of contractor to build different things a part of your house. Or maybe you just need like your local druid to druid up the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need like plants those hedges aren't going to grow themselves so and even if you were going to use some services like couriers or anything like that those are all available in your world and would probably cost a little bit of money yeah maybe you've got a party that's only martial classes absolutely no magic users whatsoever no sending spell you need a courier oh yeah speaking of having only martial classes you might want to spend your gold on some training or education maybe you can pick up another proficiency in a skill or specific proficiencies with weapons or armor types. I mean, it would be pretty sweet to be a monk that learned how to use heavy armor. I don't know if your DM would go for it, but you never know. If you make it work mechanically. <laughs> right. Or something that's really interesting, maybe you really want a feat for your class that you wouldn't normally get otherwise. Perhaps you could reason with your DM to spend a little gold on some training to pick up the grappler feat. And then you're a monk that wears heavy armor and can grapple people. That would be really cool because I do always find myself trying to figure out if I'm going to pick this feat, this feat, or this feat. And I always know that I shouldn't pick all three of them because I want this feat later. Right. <laughs> so maybe you could just be a little more poor than the rest of your friends, but you'd have another feat. <laughs> three feet would make you run fast. There you go. And now luxuries are something that you might not think of in your D&D campaign. And it's almost a harken back to equipment, but not really. It's... Something like nicer inns and hotels, getting horses, carts, different kinds of pets and other things that are super exotic. I, I, don't, I almost said Joe Exotic in my head. <laughs> I was thinking about him. <laughs> right? <laughs> things like a bag of holding happen to be a total luxury. Fast travel between different places or just convenient and luxurious travel is obviously going to be categorized under luxuries and it's probably going to cost a pretty penny. Yeah, I mean, we're talking airship pilots and sailors and stuff aren't cheap and you don't know how to do that. Gold does, <laughs> <laughs> right? And even like super nice clothes or maybe you went to a restaurant that has really really good food and that food could even be like useful if you wanted it to be you could have like a fire resistance curry for like the day or like get a plus one to advance plus one to initiative plus one to advantage doesn't make sense <laughs> <laughs> but really just a whole bunch of different dishes and concoctions that you could come up with in your head and actually make a reason for everyone to sit down at the dinner table and really, there's so many things in D&D that you can use your gold for. And if you want 
maybe around 50 ideas for D&D gold use. Check out Bob World Builder with 50 more gold spending ideas. So thanks for considering some of the ideas that we came up with on how we spend our gold in D&D. If you liked that, please do leave a like, comment any other ideas you have that are something we didn't mention, uh, and subscribe. And we'll make a bunch more videos and you'll know about it. So that'll be good. See ya. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so that about wraps it up with... No, I don't want to say that because it doesn't. So anyway, thanks for listening. No, let me give you a second.